Good evening, everyone. I'm Kara McCarty, Curatorial Director at Cooper Hewitt <coughs> National Design Museum. We're thrilled to have you here this evening to join this very interesting, exciting discussion about, um, about design made by the hand. Um, and in conversation from the iconic Finnish brand Mari Mekko and Matilda McQuaid, Deputy Curatorial Director and Head of Textiles at Cooper Hewitt. Tonight's event is part of the Design by Hand series, a thrilling new collaboration between Cooper Hewitt and Van Cleef and Arpel. Design by Hand is a biannual, week-long program of educational conversations and workshops focusing on craftsmanship, innovation, and the important role of the hand in global design. Each week of immersive programming will spotlight a pioneering design organization through special programs that reach each of the museum's core audiences, high school students, universities, students, adults, and families. <coughs> we are delighted to have Mari Mecco as a first in the series, and throughout this week, their designers have led wonderfully creative and colorful workshop up at Cooper Hewitt Design Center, offering insight into their different design processes. This series will continue in spring 2014 with American design pioneer Heath Ceramics. So please check the website cooperhewitt.org for further information. And we are immensely grateful to Van Cleef and Arpel for their vision, for their support of this unique program, and for the continued dedication to design education and discourse. The reason we are here in this beautiful space this evening is because Cooper Hewitt is undergoing the most extensive renovation project in its history, expanding gallery space by 60%, restoring historic features, and upgrading our facilities to greatly improve the visitor experience. We are excited to be collaborating with award-winning firm Diller Scafidio and Renfro on envisioning our exhibition installations to make design stories come alive and transform the visitor experience from passive to participatory. We are also working with local projects, our media designer to develop engaging ways to access digital content at the museum and online. Next fall, one year from now, we will celebrate the grand reopening of Cooper Hewitt with great fanfare and we hope to see all of you there. Before starting this discussion tonight, I would like to ask Ina Zita Gay, Director of Training and Professor at l'Ecole Van Cleef and Arpel in Paris to say a few words. Ina Zita Gay is an art historian who studied at Princeton University and who now serves as the head professor at l'Ecole Van Cleef and Arpel. Ina Zita spent her entire career as an executive with a great jewelry maison before creating an internal training and communications department for Van Cleef and Arpel USA. Her enthusiasm, love of sharing knowledge, and her passion for jewelry make her the ideal individual to lead a call to teaching. Anazita Gray, thank you. Thank you, Kara. Van Cleef and Arpels is so pleased to continue our wonderful relationship with Cooper Hewitt through the Design by Hand program. Although this program is new, Cooper Hewitt and Van Cleef and Arpels have a great history together already, beginning with the blockbuster exhibition set in style in 2011, one of the museum's most popular exhibitions. In fact, it was the hands-on workshops during the Set in Style exhibition that provided the inspiration for the Design by Hand series. The popularity of these workshops, led by stellar designers from Van Cleef and Arpels, both from New York and Paris, show that there is real hunger out there for high-level, hands-on instruction in design for the general public. L'Ecole Van Cleef and Arpels in Paris continues the Maison's tradition of virtuoso craftsmanship and dedication to sharing knowledge and encouraging discourse on the importance of design. An international team of dedicated professionals lead courses aiming to deepen understanding, spark creative inspiration, and provoke dialogue about the history and the processes behind the, craft, the master crafts of jewelry making. The aims of l'Ecole and design by hand are the same. 
to examine the important role that the human hand plays in design and the influence of traditional craftsmanship and traditional techniques that they have on contemporary design and innovation above all. Most importantly, to offer a platform for the public to experience the design process through practical hands-on workshops and discussion always. Throughout this week, I've had an amazing opportunity. You may have noticed I'm sort of floating. I don't even need to touch the ground because I've been watching this wonderful, cohesive unit of the Marimekko team as they share their knowledge and talents with teenagers, college students, and they're even kind to us adults. It has been inspiring for me to watch, and I really look forward to hearing some more tonight. A lot more, I hope. The discussion will be led by Matilda McQuaid, who is the Deputy Curatorial Director and Head of Textiles at Cooper Hewitt. Matilda proposes and organizes national and international exhibitions and publications, and oversees one of the premier textile collections in the whole world including more than 27,000 textiles produced even more than 2,000 years ago, beginning with the Han Dynasty. Since joining Cooper Hewitt in 2002 as the exhibitions curator and head of the textiles department, Matilda has curated a number of critically acclaimed exhibitions, including Joseph and Annie Albert's Designs for Living, Extreme Textiles, Designing for High Performance, and Color Moves, the Art and Fashion of Sonia Delaunay. Please join me in welcoming Matilda McQuaid. Thank you, Ina Zita. You make me sound really amazing. <laughs> I hope I can live up to it. Um, and good evening to everyone. Um, we're so glad you're here for this um, evening. You're going to be in for a real treat. We have some three incredible designers, as um, Ina Zita has already kind of described, who's been doing incredible workshops. And I think we're going to have, they're wrapping their time here in New York um, with this discussion. So we're really um, looking forward to it. So I wanted just to explain a little bit the format of this evening. I'm going to introduce our first speaker. Um, and then after that, the three designers and I will have a discussion up here. Um, and we're going to leave the last, say, 15 or 20 minutes for questions from the audience. So please jot down questions. There'll be mics on either side, so you can come up and, um, and share that with us. So what I'm going to do is um, the first um, designer, and one thing I should add is that these designers, and Jeremiah will probably go into a little bit more detail, but each of these designers was chosen very specifically to come to this panel, and they represent different areas of the Marimekko team. So I will just briefly say what, they, what they're doing, and then when they talk, they will give much more um, in-depth discussion about what they do at Marimekko. So um, the first speaker is um, Jeremiah Tesselin, and he has been working with Marimekko since 2010. He is an industrial designer, but his, his hat at Marimekko is as a brand development manager. And he's lived in Finland for the past, or Helsinki for the last 12 years, although he's originally from Canada. The first designer that's going to speak is, um, is uh, Mika Paidanen. And he is, represents the fashion design um, hat of Marimekko, and he's been with Marimekko since 1994. The third um, speaker will be Sami Rutsalainen who has been working at Mary Mecco since 2001. And he is involved in all the design, ceramic, product design, and glassware um, at Mary Mecco. And last but not least is Aino Maya Metzola, who is a printmaker. She has, um, she might be the youngest of the three. And she has been with Mary Mecco since 2006. So without further delay, please um, welcome um, Jer Jeremiah Tesselin. Thanks. Okay. Tervetuloa. Uh, that means welcome in Finnish. Um, thank you all for coming. It's been a great week in New York. Um, we spent about a year uh, building up this program. And we really spent a lot of time 
tailoring the workshops to the different audiences, you know, with teens, design students, adults, and, and families. And we also spent a lot of time tailoring this talk as well. And this talk has everything to do about the spirit of Modern Echo. So for Modern Echo, normally we wouldn't bring in three designers to give a talk. This is very special. Um, so what you're going to see tonight is something that a lot of people have never seen. It's like a three very distinct uh, sides of Modern Echo as, as one. Um, so it's a kind of new way for us to do to do talks. It's a new way for us to do workshops. So um, a bit about Modern Echo. So Modern Echo's uh, been around for about 60 years. It's uh, obviously founded in Finland. It's enjoyed a lot of international activity, in the, especially in the last five years. It had a very strong base in New York back in the 60s and 70s. And it's, it's now, of course, uh, getting stronger all the time. Um, the, the name Modern Echo is split in two parts. Uh, one part is the first name, uh, Mari. It's a Finnish girl's name. And the second part is Mekko which means dress in Finnish, so it's Mari's dress. And that's how it kind of started it, uh, started it all. Um, Modern Mecca was founded in the early 50s. Uh, Finland was recovering from the wartime. Uh, the country was very poor. There's only about five million people living in the country, and there still is only about five million people living in the country. It's very small. And people didn't have color, they didn't have patterns, and there wasn't a lot of joy. Um, so the um, company's founder, her husband, had a textile company that was going bankrupt. And she had a business idea that she would hire some artists to make some prints on the textiles, and she would make dresses. There was no imports at that time. Everyone was wearing black and, black and white and gray. So she had a fashion show. And here's a photo from the fashion show. And you can see at that time, it was really joyful. It was all about kind of like really living, um, even though it was really tough times. And this is a photo from one of the first dresses. You can, you can see in the pattern the imperfection in a way, the made by hand aspect in the pattern language. And that's really characteristic of what Modern Echo does today as well. The pattern language is really made by hand all the way through, even though we have a lot of different techniques and different materials that we use. That made by hand is, is really, really strong. So Modern Echo is, you know, we don't talk about brands so much. It's a, it's a, it's a company, it's a personality, it's a thing that people really, really enjoy. Um, people often say they really like Modern Echo. Some people even say they love Modern Echo. So it's almost like kind of they have a really strong association with it uh, if they know it. So some people describe Modern Echo as being very bold. It can be playful. It can be very expressive. And it can be iconic. So Jacqueline Kennedy <coughs> bought six dresses as part of her husband's uh, political campaign. And she used them, uh, especially during leisure time, so for us as a company, I mean, it's always been iconic women using Modern Mecco in, in, different, in, in different situations. So what makes Modern Mecco special? And this is something that, you know, we brought in Mika, Sami, and Ainamaya. They'll each talk about different parts about uh, Modern Mecco. Mika will talk about the, you know, it's not that he'll, he'll say one quote again. He'll say it's not the dress that makes a, uh, a woman sexy. It's always the woman. So it's always about the person who buys Modern Mecco how they use it in their home, how they use it when they go out, how they use it during the, the you know, Christmas holidays, these kind of things. This is the fascinating part. So the company, it's 60 years of history. It still makes colors and patterns, but we live differently. So life in New York is obviously different than in, in, in Tokyo or in, in, uh, in Helsinki. Um, so people buy and they use the prints and colors in different ways. So that's the fascinating part. And Modern Mac is for people of all ages. So we have the kids' lines, we have adults, we have, have uh, you know, for elderly people. Um, it's for everyone uh, across the world. And we have different lines. So we have the product lines that uh, are, you know, always starting with the, the patterns in fabric. And then hard products when it comes to ceramics and glass and, and other different lines. So it's always um, for use at, in the home. And then product lines for uh, fashion when going out and bags and accessories. And all this comes together in different spaces. So our, our digital space, in, in terms of videos, what we, uh, how, what we talk about online, on Facebook, on a website, these kind of things, the digital space is where you find out more about Modern Echo and how it, how it lives. And then physical space, we have a shop down, uh, downtown at the Flatiron District, and that's a kind of movement of color and space. So you have different sort of sides of Modern Echo within, within one environment. So I'm gonna introduce Mika. Thank you.
My name is Mika Piirainen and I've been a working company since 94. So I studied in the Lahti Design Institute and Ravensbourne College in London. And my final collection was the Milkmaid. And the Marimekko people came to see the final collection show and they asked me to come to company visit. And I bring my portfolio and I met the uh, main lady, Kirsti Pakkanen. And in between the interviews, she say like, you hired in the company. <laughs> so I was like, ooh, this happened quickly. <laughs> so in a way, I was in the right place in the right time. So I think it's all about the luck after all in the lives. So in next coming spring, I've been working company 20 years. And here you see my office in the Hertoniemi. It's full of stuff. I like to collect stuff and uh, some ar archive pieces in there. And there's a little lion you can see there that takes care of the stuff. I could see if the lion is a little bit moved. Somebody's been in the office. <laughs> so, and then also, um, I love little details. You see the patterns. I always keep these pattern things and buckles and things like I, I'm using in the collection. And it's a teamwork after all, especially the clothing. This is my pattern cutting lady, the blonde one, and she's from Lapland. And she comes to office only twice in a month. So we have to be really re prepared when she comes. And here is the meetings we have. And here is my, my girl, I call her supporting actress. I'm not calling her as an assistant, because it's much nicer. You know, it's kind of acting what we're doing in a way. <laughs> so. That's the team, and um, otherwise we, 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 we talk a lot in the phone, and it works really well because we know each other quite well. It's like we're like a married couple, and we understand one word, what we mean, what we want. And here are some sketches. And then the inspiration, there's a little board in here. I love taking photos and traveling around. And also, I like the ur urban, like this is the festival, uh, flow festival in Helsinki, and nice graphic things. And then nowadays, my parents are living in Lapland, so I like to visit there. This is just a photo of autumn leaves. You have a beautiful autumn leaves also in, in here in New York. This is, uh, I'm always observing people in the street, and I love this one. This textile thing was really nice. It's really full on, it's just the roses wrapped roses everywhere. And this, when I went to countryside, and we went to get some eggs, and I think this is perfect with the colorways, so these natural colors. And Helsinki in autumn colors. Again, I like to call this little island. I'm crazy about the autumn colors, so I'm happy in New York in this time. And this is the building, all covered. And then nature does beautiful things. This is sort of the seaweed, what's been there years and years and dry. And I found this place this summer. I think it's amazing again. Kind of the same feeling with the roses. This is texture in here. And this I call Man in the Moon. This is the midnight sun we have in Finland. And it's a pretty island. The islands are amazing in Finland. If you have any chance to come to Finland, go to islands. And this is the, the printing factory, the colors. We are crazy about the colors. Then uh, you can't have the flowers enough. More is more, I think, with the flowers. <laughs> and then I love bees and the honey. And I think this is sweet because I think the, the bees are having the winter sleep in here. And then we talk about the archives a lot in Marimekko. And we have these ladies, early 50s, they glue these things. And this one is from 66, 1966. And don't you think this is so classical still and timeless? They could be so hip in New York nowadays, <laughs> like the colors, all the hipsters would wear this <laughs> straight away. Anyway, and then of course I work with the young designers like Ainomaya Metsola. Uh, so sometimes I like, we had to team up all about the flowers. And then we just say to Ainomaya, do some little flowers. And that's what she did. And this is the one photo shoot we did in the, the mining factory. I think this photo is quite beautiful. And then about the um, objects, what I'm doing, I also do umbrellas. This is a great print from uh, Katsuyi Wakisaka. We have lots of Japanese people around our company. This is from the 70s. So I made this umbrella 
it could be like a snowstorm or rain in here. Also the scarf. And then the dresses, I made a skirt and a shirt, put in like a vice versa. And when the women wear it, it's like the, the horizon you see from the islands. And then also the dress, it's good to be black in here and then happening more in the down. And then the hats, some classical prints. And uh, we are crazy about the dots. We think the circle is the most happiest and uh, friendly shape in the world. And it's selling well as well. I have to say this <laughs> to everyone. And this is the one project I really like this print. It's from the, the out of space moon when man went, went in the moon in the 69. And uh, sometimes we rework with the prints. So here you see the repeat, how it was. So we take these little little dots away, and this is the result what we did. And then I talk with the old people who used to do the prints, who got the copyrights. And it's a lot of work, even it's the archive prints. They're not ready just like that. And um, little prints are very nice. This is Pirput Parput from the 50s. And also this one is Papayo. It's almost from the back seat. I think it looks like a solid, but it's, it's such a beautiful thing. It's just the quiet ones. So Marimekko is not all about the big, massive prints. It's all about the also contrast, the silent ones. This is the raincoat with the same print, with the black and white. And also this print, never seen a daylight. It was done in the 50s. I just see the little bees, and then I thought, I'd like to bring this print back in life. And this was the old days when you were talking on the phone and you have nothing else to do. The meanwhile, with the sketching with the pen, this came that way. That's what I heard from Maya Isola. Also, I do some solid clothes. So I like to have just the shape and that tells sort of architectural. And then we love stripes. We're crazy about the stripes. There's a backs. And always Marimekko people think we own this stripe. So and sometimes if somebody copies this, we think, no, this is Marimekko's <laughs> stripe, but it's, it's a little bit difficult thing. I also do my own prints, and this is what I did from the 97, and um, it was in the summer collection this summer. And this is very typical Marimekko as well. There's a positive and negative, what we use, black and white and white and black. And here you see the sizing. For the backs, I use a little bit the smaller scale. Uh, then I done my kits. I used to do the kits wear as well, but now I'm retired. I think I'm I'm done my kits. But here you see some examples what I did, and this is very typical Finnish girl in here with the unico, maybe the most well-known print work we have. And this is Katsui Vakisakas Bubu, the cars, and Lorena the dress in here. And then the stories. I used to be a lot of in, in the photo shootings, and I really like to do the whole setup at the very end. So this was the story. We went to shooting in Finland one uh, lake, but it was so rainy for one week. So these girls stay on my home. We ha I just had a little flat. And finally, when, when we get to this summer place, the rain stopped. And this was the when the rain stopped, where we get this photo. And I think it's quite nice image. And it's already 13 years old, this image. So it's kind of timeless. And the same photos in here, the summer place, suddenly they got this everywhere, the old Marimekko prints, curtains. And we didn't know that once we get to the, this summer place. And here is uh, Mansikka Vuoret, the print. It's called Strawberry Mountains. And in the Marimekko, all the people say, like, you can't use this as a clothing. It's, it's too big, so we scale it smaller. And all the time when the people, interior people, use this, they put the strawberries on the right way. So now you see it. It's, it's supposed to be that way. It's very smart, the thinking. This is the lens, classical print as well. This shooting we did in Estonia. And here you see the classical... Estonian uh, wooden buildings. I think that was great, the background. And uh, then I'll tell about this story a little bit. 
Uh, I made this Mustatamma, it's, uh, and I, all about the horses was the team, the collection. And then I wanted to shoot in the studio, and I rent a uh, horse. <laughs> and uh, this lady, she's very good with the horses. She used the films and things like that. And this was the shot. After this shot, what, what we done, the paper roll came down, and the horses don't like anything what comes from the up. So he went completely mad. There was like, <laughs> if I could use the word, everywhere and all the lamps were like <laughs> falling down so it was very dramatic <laughs> and I, then I told my boss I will have the photos of the horse so we somehow made it some photos more and the horse eyes as you could see the scare of the, the thing but this is the beautiful shot what we get but after that was drama <laughs> and this is the shooting in the again the islands in Finland and the water is quite freezing in early June, so I put this girl in the water, and this boat was like almost under the water. But the photographer was so nice that he felt like they have to be like uh, the, he did the same thing. So we went, he went to to the boat, and the girl could take a photo of the photographer. <laughs> so it's very democratic. So in in Finland, we treat the women quite well, like. <laughs> And this is the same girl in the studio. And again, this is the Ainomaya Metsola and mine, um, um, what we did together, Pare. And the year was around 2008. Yeah. And this I like because of the, again, you can see I use different materials. This is more light material in here. And then um, the Marimekko woman, as we say, the woman is sexy, not the dress. Remember this. This is quite easy. <laughs> and uh, I think this is a good example here. This is sort of artistic woman taking care. And uh, over here you see the silk screens. This is taken in the Marimekko factory. Again, you can see this little quiet print. And this is the part of the weather diary, what Ainomaya and Sami is going to talk a lot. And we made the raincoats, because the rain is, after all, is a happy thing, I think. And when you dress up with these happy colors and all this, and you could enjoy the rain. Rain is not that bad, after all. <laughs> OK, thank you. Sami is next. Hi, uh, my name is Sami Ruotsalainen. I've been working for Marimikko since uh, 2001. Uh, I studied as a trainee there uh, uh, when I was still studying in the University of Art and Design Helsinki. And uh, later on I uh, worked as an assistant for many years for different designers. And then later on, uh, 2007, I started as a full-time designer there. And nowadays I'm working uh, as an in-house designer, mainly uh, with uh, shapes, different kind of shapes and materials. And now I'll talk a little bit about the way how I work, about my inspiration, and then I show you a few, few nice cases about the design works. Um, with this picture, I wanted to start because uh, there's a little story before I started in um, in university. Uh, in my childhood, uh, we didn't have any marimekko at home. Normally, every Finnish home uh, has marimekko, but for some reason, we didn't have. <laughs> and then in the, it was almost high school times when I realized that there is this kind of company, and uh, I decided that maybe one day I will do something and uh, ask them if I could go there. And uh, many, many years later, I called them one day. It took half a year, many phone calls, and then finally, I was able to start there as a trainee. So nowadays, I'm collecting uh, lots of these fabrics. And as you see, this from my home, this is just a little part of my dream from those times. Uh, I work in two different places. Uh, uh, daily, I'm working in my studio in Hertoniemi. As you can see here, it's, uh, there's plenty of stuff I'm working with. Uh, there's all kind of things that I'm collecting on walls, things happening 
but uh, then when I'm doing my real design work, uh, the place where I work is my own home. I'm working quite often at the night time, so it's not this light. Uh, but anyway, uh, there I feel that in home there is all the things that I need for designing. All the materials is there, all the inspirational things. I'm collecting lots of different uh, kind of vintage ceramic and glass pieces, art. I'm reading lots of art books, so I need all the material there while I'm working. Here is a little, uh, some pictures from my home, my sketchbooks. I'm working, uh, normally I'm starting with uh, lots of sketches. Uh, they are really tiny, like almost stamp size. And uh, I have this bad habit of working with different books at the same time. <laughs> so uh, when I'm ready with the ideas, uh, I'm making more detailed sketches. Uh, one uh, big thing for me when I'm uh, starting to inspire myself and uh, figuring out what to do next is I'm taking pictures all the time. Wherever I go, I take pictures. And then I'm uh, making mood boards of those, selecting the best ones. And uh, here actually is the color map I did for Spring 14. We were asked to bring three, three nice pictures in our meeting. <coughs> this is my three nice pictures and three <laughs> colors. So all the colors are there. Here you can see I'm traveling quite a lot, especially during the summer times in Italy, uh, Finnish uh, nature, uh, islands in Finland. I'm photographing my friends, different colors. Uh, sometimes the pictures, uh, the quality is not the thing for me, or the sometimes it's only the color or the idea. So as you see here, they. Uh, on these times, I needed something green, something blue, pastels, black and white. And this is this was really interesting when I uh, finally find these pictures because these are taken uh, in uh, France, Italy, uh, Finland, and Germany. And uh, you can see here certain patterns going on, like there are stripes and this kind of uh, geometrical things going on. Then uh, this is from my office. Uh, I'm working with uh, lots of different materials, mainly paper, ceramics, textiles, product design. And this is one case that I did a uh, few years ago when company uh, asked me to uh, design a stationary line we didn't have this kind of uh, category before, so it was a completely new thing. And uh, it was really interesting to try to find the uh, way to show Marimekko's shape and also the patterns, because I'm not making patterns, I'm using someone else's patterns. So I had to think always how to use those in different products. Sometimes it's only uh, a little detail as you see here uh, in the down corner, uh, I'm using the colors, small details, stitchings, colors of the stitchings. There are plenty of things that I'm thinking then. And uh, in this case, I wanted to use uh, really classic Marimekko colors that we always have. Bright red, dark blue, uh, yellow, and uh, black and white. Sometimes it's all about uh, prints, like here details, inner size of the envelopes. Or then, like here, uh, sometimes you need solid colors to make the collection somehow perfect and to combine different patterns together. Uh, this was a nice project I did uh, with uh, uh, actually our first designer, fashion designer, Vuokka Eskolin Nurmesniemi, and uh, we had only the book and the page of the book in the beginning, as you see here. Uh, the colorway was there. And then later on, we did the whole collection with uh, fabrics, ceramics. It was quite difficult because uh, it's wide stripes. So you had to th uh, think a lot when you put it in a small piece or in a small item, like a coffee cup or a mug. 
and uh, then we are doing a teamwork on first sketching what I think would be the best and then the designer uh, print designer comes to Hertoniemi and then we discuss together and uh, here is textiles products I did with uh, Maya Lovkari. I used her print, this really colorful uh, tilkutakki. In my own products, I uh, wanted to use it together with the solid colors. There's mo lots of details, metal rings, uh, the pillows are made uh, with a quilt technique. Uh, here is solid colors as well that I'm working uh, in ceramics. This is my color palette normally. Uh, in ceramics, the palette is quite small, but as you see here with the different combinations, you can do lots of things. Uh, this picture I chose because it tells for me the whole uh, soul of Marimekko. Like the, we want to bring people around the table together, enjoy life. There are all the things you need. There are textiles, clothing, dishes. Uh, it's like a big family around the table. And this is taken in uh, in 60s, and the legendary uh, owner of the Marimekko, Armiratia, actually, is the one in pink dress in the middle of the, or in the end of the table. And this is the thing that I'm doing in my own uh, design work as well. I think a lot the people who I'm working with, uh, uh, the end users who are using my things, uh, I'm spending my time in the same way. This is from last summer, midsummer party. I asked my friends to come there and I made food for them because the uh, food has been always a really big thing for me since I remember. As a kid, I wanted to be a baker or a cook and later on I realized that maybe I would do something else because I was drawing all the time. And uh, in my work nowadays, I can combine these two things and uh, making food is something that relaxes me. I get new ideas. I can test items. I can test my own pieces. I'm taking lots of pictures with Marimiko fabrics. I'm trying different ideas because I'm also styling the photographs for uh, interior shots. So wherever I'm going, I'm normally having a piece of fabric with me and uh, then I can test and try different things. And somehow it's uh, about the finding the beauty of everyday life and the small things that you can find there. This is from my home. I wanted to test my own items. And and then uh, two big bigger cases that I have done uh, in Marimekko. This was the first one. Uh, actually, the first design work that I did for Marimekko in 2008. Uh, I was asked to draw a new uh, tableware set for them. And uh, before that, Marimiko has had uh, ceramics since 60s, few items, and uh, but not the whole tableware line. And uh, uh, in a Marimiko way, the brief was we would like to have something for eating and drinking, something for hot and cold drinks. And basically, that's it. Then my boss was so nice, she gave me one picture, the big picture in the middle, and said that this is all you need to see, this is the whole thing, what we want. And I was like, okay, it gets even nicer. <laughs> then I collected uh, pictures from old Marimekko books, like this is the uh, mood board that I made then. The next step was that I uh, started to measure, I'm doing that a lot, it's sometimes annoying in restaurants everywhere I go. <laughs> I'm testing, trying, and making these little notes for myself. There's a little concept page that I did. Like the idea is there, and now you can see all the items about the measurements and uh, volumes. Detailed sketches about the idea. Uh, I'm always thinking what kind of food I would like to serve, how the things work with food, like the teapot. There's a really wide spout, so you can see the uh, tea running there really nicely. And here the end result, oiva, white ceramics. And then after that, uh, the Maya Lovkari was asked to make a first print for these. And this is her first sketches that she did. And she was so happy. 
because this, this was the first time she saw, or she was the first designer invited to do this kind of thing for new dishes. So she was uh, the first person actually who saw the uh, prototypes. She was able to touch these, try these, uh, check how they are, and then she was able to do what she wanted for these. And uh, this is her first idea for the pattern, Sirtola Puutarha. Some more pictures of the prototypes that we did. We worked this kind of paper curves to find the perfect uh, solution for this. And this is the end result. Really colorful, together with the white items. So Oiva and uh, Sirtola Puutarha are there together. And then one uh, really nice picture. I really like this. Uh, I wasn't then styling these pictures, but uh, I had to call immediately when I saw this stylist and tell that this is the way I planned it was supposed to be shot. Like, I think that this tells the whole thing. It's a bit crazy. No one carries things like that. But I think that that's <laughs> exactly how we do it. We are not doing like everyone else is doing, but in our own way. And then the second case, uh, Finnair, the literally the biggest design work that I have done. <laughs> I didn't know what was uh, going on when I when they first time asked me to go to meet Finnair people. We went there with our design team and uh, they told that they like my uh, ceramics that I have done before. And then later on I realized that there is a little bit something more coming as well, <laughs> like a plane. <laughs> uh, few pictures about the how we did the outside of the plane. This is my rough idea for it, all the notes. Then uh, I worked with the 3D model. I glued all the flowers there. And uh, later on, the Isola family, whose print this is, they came there and checked that everything is OK. And then after that, Finner people made a real or like sharp uh, 3D model, because you don't want to make mistakes with these kind of things. Uh, it had to happen like at once, like because uh, the schedule was also so tight that we didn't have almost any days. I think that it it was ready like a uh, few hours before it was supposed to leave from from the place where where they painted it, and there was no place for mistakes. As you can imagine, one flower is four meters, so it's it was a quite a quite big job. <laughs> uh, then I also did the uh, inner side uh, porcelains for business class, my first sketches for the idea. And this is the variety of the materials and things we did uh, for uh, for the plane: menus, paper cups, textiles. Uh, the whole set, so there's many, many things happening, and we had to, we had four different prints to work with at the same time, and uh, we wanted to bring somehow the really peaceful inner side for the plane, so it was uh, not about prints, not about the my designs, but the whole atmosphere, uh, the whole atmosphere, we had to create this peace of mind really peaceful environment for the people who are coming there because you don't really want to have this too much stress going on there. It has to be a really peaceful and nice flight. People can rest and relax there. Uh, the ceramics and paper cups. Ceramics are for business class and then there are paper products for economy. Uh, girl resting there, obviously, really peaceful. Uh, we did really like uh, light textiles that goes under the ceramics. Uh, the colors are really light gray and white. So it's a perfect background for food. You can really see it, enjoy it. And later on when we bring the porcelains there, it adds a pops of color there. One picture from economy side. Uh, I'm really happy that they got the idea, because we explained in the beginning that uh, quite often only the business side is taken care of. But now we wanted to bring the whole plane the same feeling of uh, that someone has really thought about them in every, every detail of design. And there's a boy sleeping in under the 
really nice blanket there. Okay, and now it's Einomai's turn. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Einomaya and I'm a print designer and illustrator. And I've been work working for Marimekko almost eight years now. So I started as a freelance designer and nowadays I work there as an in-house designer. And I became a print designer almost by accident. So my background is in graphic design, but then I took part in a design competition organized by Marimekko. And I won a one of the awards and Marimekko liked one, uh, my print and took it in the collection. And that's how it all started. And nowadays I design prints for all kinds of products like fabrics, clothing, tableware, toys, stationery, mm, bags and accessories. And this is my sketchbook. It's probably my most important tool. So, so I sketch a lot and uh, process <coughs> my ideas there. So I usually I don't make mood boards. Mm, I carry my uh, sketchbook with me wherever I go <coughs> mm, and I make, make these small sketches and notes all the time. And this is my studio I, uh, and I go there to paint and draw and uh, do all the rest there. So, mm, so I really like that the, the I have my studio at home because I don't have to look at the clock there and I can work whenever I feel like it. And this is my dog. If I'm <laughs> sometimes when I'm feeling uninspired, I, I take him out and try to clear, clear my mind with that. It usually works really well. And I always uh, draw and paint by hand. Mm, watercolor is probably my favorite technique, but I also like to ex experiment with all, all kinds of techniques because I, I kind of believe that you shouldn't get too comfortable with the tools because mm, that way the work working process is like stays more fresh somehow. So I use also markers and crayons and paper cuts sometimes, ink, all kinds of stuff. And when I'm finished with the painting, I go to this place. This is my studio at, at Marimekko office. So, so I go there sca and scan my paintings and, and then I make the repeat and all, all kinds of things like that uh, to, to finish the, the design into, a, into an actual, actual print. And then I uh, bring the print to the Marimekko artwork studio and they, they produce the final fi files for production and then, it, and then I go and choose the colors. So I really like spending time <coughs> with those drawers. There's like hundreds of samples of color, colors and I, mm, I just browse through, through them and try different shades. And then I cut them and make the final colorways. And then there on the background, you can see a print and I'm next going to talk a little bit about that. So this is my my friend's daughter. Two years ago, I I spent a, I think it was two years ago. I spent mm, the midsummer midsummer time with with her and her family. And she's in the picture. She's wearing some flowers in her head, on her head. And this midsummer celebration is quite important for for Finns. So so people like to go to the country countryside and spend time with their friends and go swimming and and go to sauna and things like that. And there's this um, old tradition or story that's linked with the, with the midsummer. So according to this story, um, if a young go girl, if she mm, like picks, I think it's seven flowers and puts them under under her pillow, during midsummer nights, she's supposed to see her future husband in her dreams, <laughs> but yeah, I I wouldn't recommend <laughs> trying. <laughs> at least, uh, <laughs> yeah, <coughs> my experience is that it doesn't doesn't work so well. But <laughs> but I made this print, 
um, that's kind of based on this story. It's called Midsummer Magic, Johannes Taiga in Finnish. And this is a rabbit that's running close to my home. I live on this island, and there's 800 people living there. And there's more animals there than, uh, than people, so we have <laughs> rabbits and frogs, and sometimes we see foxes and all kinds of birds and mice things like that, and I've noticed that the animals get really active in the evening, so I like to take the dog out and go and observe the animals there. And the dog chases after, after the ra rabbits, he really loves that. <laughs> and then I made this print called Huhuli, and you can see the animals there. We don't have bears, but the rest, <laughs> rest we have <laughs> in Suomenlinna. And during the summertime, I, I like to go sailing. <coughs> so once I went to this island called Jurmo, it's quite, quite far from mainland Finland. It's, uh, it's this really like raw nature there. There's only like a lot of rocks and grass and only a few trees, but there's a few people living there. And it's, I think it's one of the most beautiful pa places where I've ever been. So. So based on these memories, I made this print where you can see the different kind of different sizes of rocks there. And then uh, there's sketches for this interesting project that I I did about two years ago when we opened our flagship, flagship store in, in New York. So I designed this opening graphics for the store. And um, the kind, kind of the idea for the graphics was to illustrate the spirit of Marimekko and Marimekko coming to New York. And we, I made these sketches that kind of were based on everyday life in New York, but I actually hadn't been to New York ever. <laughs> ever so <laughs> so there, maybe there are a few cliches there, but <laughs> I, ha I did some research and <laughs> <laughs> so. There's the ske staircases and cupcakes, and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, that's good to hear. <laughs> so these are the illustrations, and here you can see them. Uh, so it was quite a big, big wall that we built, kind of bringing this splash of color into the city. And then we have had similar graphics in, in Boston also. And this is from Helsinki. And this is also from Helsinki, but there's been those, those, those kind of things also in, in Australia and Sweden and other, other places where we've been opening stores after, after New York. And I also make a lot of prints for clothing. This is I think it, this is actually one of my favorite prints for clothing that I made. It's the print that Mika showed earlier. It's called Kukkameri, which means like this sea of flowers. I don't know if it translates so well. But mm. And I, uh, I really think it's quite interesting to design prints for clothing because clothes are so, so personal for people, so, so I think about what kind of people would wear, wear the prints and what kind of colors they would like to have next to their skin and it's quite a personal thing for people. And this is uh, uh, this kind of, mm, maybe it's a garden by night and it's printed on silk which is really nice because the colors kind of pop out really well on silk so that's nice for me. And in this print I I kind of wa wanted to play with the placement of the of the prints. So, so here the kind of this line drawing emphasizes the waist, and in in different dresses that were made from the same fabric, the the line drawing is is placed in different places. So in in one dress it's in on the hem, and and in one top I think it was around the so shoulders. So so, so the fashion designer can really play with that print, which is nice. And also in this print, the, the flower 
flower pattern was kind of placed in the center and and these uh, uh, these lines were put there to kind of make it more <coughs> more peaceful and easier to wear and next time we're going to going to talk about this project uh, in a collection called the weather diary which was a collaboration with Samir Watsalainen and he designed the shapes for the products and I made the prints and the collection was inspired by weather and the four seasons in Finland mm, and it was actually it started because we had um, about two years ago we had really interesting weathers in Finland r like stor strong storms that we don't usually have so often so all the design team was quite impressed and inspired by that and we started thinking that maybe we could we could build a collection around this this theme and then I for me it was natural to start uh, working on this idea kind of um, the uh, like I based the, the process uh, for this personal things so so I I started con collecting a lot of photos from my home island where I observed weather so this is quite close to my home and the, the city center in Helsinki is located like in the horizon there but it's it's quite close like a 15 minute ferry ride so it's not totally like isolated <laughs> and I I have a lot of these photos that kind of illustrate the uh, the feeling that I wanted to have in the in these products, and I photographed different weather, so this this uh, windy, stormy weather, and tall grass that we have a lot in the island, and this is the landscape that I see from my win window. It's a misty morning, quite beautiful weather, and there's some nice clouds there. And you can see a small ship sailing to Sweden there in the horizon. And then I started painting with watercolors. I made like piles of these sketches and paintings uh, to work on. I worked with watercolors and made this wet on wet technique. And I also used some ink on, on the paintings. So, so there you can see some different types of rains and storms and grass grass with rain and wind mm, yeah more more of this more grass and this is kind of a small island that we have a lot close close to my home island where there's only grass growing there really nothing else but they are beautiful and when I when I finished the painting I started scanning them and trying them on, on different products so these are sketches for plate for a plate and I like to play with the also with the white area on the plate because I don't want to hide the whole like the whole shape of the of the product so there's some some white around the illustration and here you can actually see the final plate and this is another one and then there is this smaller one for dessert with this uh, autumn colors that you have now <coughs> here in New York we don't have that anymore it's like winter soon and there's a teapot with a small island there I added this sun after afterwards into the picture and there's a, a coffee cup with with a rainy rainy landscape and mugs mugs with grass and this uh, um, serving pot there's there's this misty morning kind of a nice summer day is is about to come and here you can see all the tableware together so they were m all m quite many products and and also there were posters this is a poster with this landscape 
landscape painting, and there's here I put many of the original paintings together into a poster. And this is a storm, storm with rain, a kind of a thunder feeling here. And then we had three fabrics. This is a, a linen fabric called Harmaya. And Harmaya is, Harmaya is actually a, a name of a lighthouse island close, close to Helsinki. So I named these fabrics after, after islands in Finnish archipelago. And this is a, a print called Yussero. It's been printed on cotton and it's kind of this really strong, heavy rain and dark skies there. And this is Kuuskaja Skarin. That's maybe one of my favorite products in the collections because it really reminds me of my, my home island. It's uh, it looks quite a lot li like that in the in the autumn time, and I uh, personally I, I think it's quite nice if and important for me that if the inspiration for the for the product is is somehow personal and close close to you because somehow I believe that also the people will will connect to the products more easily and because maybe they they can sense that there's there's this. Um, emotions behind the products. Thank you. Well, I can say I feel deprived. I <laughs> I did not have Mari Mecco in my house when I was growing up. How many did did you all have Mari Mecco? Well, I know Sami, I, I completely share, or I sympathize with you, empathize with you. But um, did you have Mari Mecco in your house? Yes, uh, we did. When I, there's a photo when I was four years old, and I, there's a birthday cake, and I'm just blowing that. There's a, this poppy <coughs> with the green army, this sort of 70s colorway, mm -hmm. and I, I was having an even stripe. So that's quite full on Marimekko. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my, my parents were a bit hippie. They liked this sort of, uh -huh. in the 70s, God, they liked kind more. of this sort of, uh, the, you know, the house, the kitchen was red. The bedroom was all about the brown and white. And the <laughs> living room was everything. Yeah, that was 70s. That was normal. That's great. Yes. And what about you, Anamaya? Yeah, we had a lot of Marimekko curtains at our home and also my grandparents had them a lot. And I remember my mother wore a lot of Marimekko dresses and I even remember that that she had this one dress that uh, she had this like adult size and I had this mini size of the Aww. same dress. So that's <laughs> quite cute. <laughs> now I had the ad adult size yeah. nowadays. I, no. I got it from my mother because she doesn't feed it, it anymore. <laughs> well, I feel I discovered Marimekko later in my in the later 70s when I visited um, DR, which was our kind of the place to mm. see Mari Mecco in Cambridge um, in mm. Boston area. And so I remember going into that store and just being totally overwhelmed. And also my grandmother had a Mari Mecco tablecloth. And I think that was the, the only instance that I really, um, and it really had a very, you know, very uh, strong um, memory in my mind about, about Mari Mecco. So um, anyway, I'm just was curious because I felt sorry for Sami <laughs> that didn't <laughs> grow up with it. <laughs> but um, I wanted to talk about the hands, and this is a, a series about the hand. And Sami, you um, you you showed your sketchbooks, mm -hmm. and I was um, very interested in how you. I was reading a little bit about you in the pattern book, mm -hmm. um, where it talked about each of you as designers for Mari Mecco. And how you and you mentioned it in your talk about going around and measuring um, all different types of um, glasses and ceramics. And how do you finally kind of come up with um, sort of the perfect measurement from um, from all those studies? Did you you had lots of them and you had lots of numbers, but how did you ultimately decide on what would be the best? Uh. Oh God, uh, there is like, <laughs> there is no uh, 
right or wrong way to do it. Uh, it's uh, it's this weird ongoing process that I'm doing all the time. Uh, the notes work for me as kind of a notepad. Uh, so whenever I find something nice, I feel maybe a handle which feels nice or something. Mm -hmm. I make a little note or drawing or idea or take a photo just to remind me later how it felt that day. Mm -hmm. uh, what was really nice in this case is that normally quite often the companies are giving strict numbers like uh, plate is uh, there has to be a plate which is 24 centimeters, 26 and so on. Uh, in this case, I was given free hands to do what I wanted. I first uh, tried to do it the normal way because I know from the I've been working with different companies as well, so I know the background and how it should be. But then I ripped off all the papers and I started from the beginning, uh, from the feeling like now I have an uh, empty table and I can do what I want and I had to find my own marmico sizes mm -hmm. that fits really well. Uh, but did you have, I mean, this goes for all of you in terms mm -hmm. of like the steps because you, you talked about the inspiration, which was fantastic. I don't know what you would do. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure you would think of something, but if you weren't in Finland, <laughs> because I mean the nature and just all of that. I mean, it, it obviously is really important to how you work mm -hmm. and what you ul ultimately design. Mm. But I'm curious, after that inspiration, where does the hand come in? You sketch, mm -hmm. um, you know, where? I mean, in terms of the production of the actual pieces, like for the ceramic, the glass, for the textiles, for the fashion. Where else does the hand come into it? And I'm sure there's lots of, you know, mm. different ways. You can still be using the computer and, and still mm. the hand is important. But I'm curious, do you have prototypes? Do you make models by hand? Do you use clay um, mm. for some mm. of the three-dimensional objects? How do you, where does the hand come in in other ways besides your sketchbooks? Like in Helsinki, we have the, the, um, the ladies who do the samples, the mm -hmm. sawings, and it's nice, it's all around. It's quite unusual nowadays. You could do the first samples in there. Mm -hmm. So then we are, of course, we go, when they got the, the brinks on the table, we, we go there and help and watch what they're <coughs> doing. Even uh -huh. we cut in sometimes, uh -huh. we're there. That's actually the favorite place in the factory, actually. And is this right near where your <coughs> studio is? And yeah, it's in Hertonemi. Everything is in there, right. down there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's quite hand mm -hmm. for me. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. And yeah. also we have the printing factory mm -hmm. in Hertoniemi, Helsinki, and and there there is like a, um, a in the first steps of the printing process <laughs> there's a lot of this hand hand work. So like the screens are um, kind of there's many things that the, the screen makers do by hand and also mm. the first sam samples of the of the fabrics are, are always printed by hand uh -huh. like a hand printing table i don't know right yeah yeah mm. that's way. like the old days they do it yeah hand. yeah the yeah. few yeah. few meters right yeah. Yeah. by hand and yes. then yeah. it's and then it's yeah, kind yeah. Of a when more we mechanized. try try different colorways and in right. that, mm. during that process mm -hmm. it's all done by hand and mm -hmm. in terms of like, like I mean, what's interesting too is you're all working in different media. I sort of thought it was like, okay, you're in ceramics and mm -hmm. you know three dimensional, and you're in strictly fashion. But you're all kind of crossing each other's areas, which I think is really it's unusual. I think, um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, you usually get sort of pegged in you know specific departments, but that's not the case. And so, how often? Do you collaborate, and how often do you actually um, inspire one another or influence one another in what you do? Mm. I mean, you mentioned well, a couple of collaborations, but yeah. Yeah, I don't even know how many designers it's there are at Maraneko. Mm. Are there quite many? There's quite many yeah, nowadays. Because there are freelancers, and then there are a few in-house designers, right. but many of them are in freelancers who, who collaborate with Marimekko once in a while uh -huh. and some are, are there all, all the time even though they are freelancers so they mm. they work really closely with with the company so mm. are you doing a are you doing a lot of collaborations together I mean I know you have yeah. the wonderful sort of studios in your homes mm -hmm. and then you have a studio mm -hmm. at um, Marimekko but how often do you kind of meet up and sort of work on mm. projects together 
Uh, yeah, I think that it depends on the project that we are doing. Uh, for example, Mika, I think that whenever you need prints, you start with the... Yeah, and there's a need, as you see, all the time. Yeah. I need the prints non-stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like... So yeah, we talk with it's Mika never what ending. kind of yeah. prints he, yeah. he needs, and there's it a lot of this the kind of discussion, yes. mm -hmm. open discussion about yeah. uh -huh. what we should do next. Yeah. Anoma is wearing the dress, yes, what is in the is autumn collection. This, this beautiful. Is flowers, yeah. Yeah. And again, I order the flowers. I can't, you know, I like flowers after all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And like in this weather diary uh, collection uh, that we did together with Aina Maya, in the beginning, especially, we talk a lot about the feeling. Uh, Aina Maya was asking what kind of things she should think when she's uh, drawing a new patterns for mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was able to tell about the details that are really meaningful for me in the pieces. Uh, we discussed a lot about the balance between print and uh, object. And like Aina Maya mentioned that she would like to, or she wanted to have white there in the patterns as well. So she didn't want it to cover the whole piece, but to somehow find the balance that the shape and the pattern get something from each other. And mm. Yeah, so right or find mm. the perfect balance there. So that process took about one year when we mm. made the weather diary and we met a lot, like maybe once in a week yeah. or once in two weeks, mm -hmm. and we talked about this. So, so it's really a teamwork. Mm. So when then you, you come mm. up, like say for the um, tableware, mm -hmm. would you come up with the design of the tableware and then um, work with um, Anamaya on the, the, she would work on the pattern to kind of mesh with that tableware? Yeah. Mm. Or does the pattern come first? Because I know sometimes, like in your work, the pattern comes mm. first, which I think is interesting in fashion, because mm. usually it's all about the silhouette or the drape. But exactly. In, yeah. But here mm. it's like it's so different because it's it's all about the pattern, and then you're mm. sort of designing in relation to the pattern. So it's 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 interesting. Mm. I always start with the pattern, so it's more, it's like I want to have the mood, what I'm feeling, and what is good for the mm -hmm. team. And after that, I'm thinking like, what sort of material would come nicely? Is it silk or linen or jersey or woven? And after that, I do the sketches. So it's right. much more easier that way, kind of like you're not wasting time as well. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, uh, yeah. And, like and it's, it's quite unusual. It not, I think the, the fashion designers usually they start the sketching and then yeah, they do absolutely. all mm -hmm. sort of materials. But yeah. I think the material is very important as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like uh, with this case, with the weather diary, there wasn't even, uh, most of the items were there when I may have started, but the latest additions that we did, uh, we only had this funny, cutted, <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. uh, kind of a like silhouette picture of the jug and she was trying to figure out how it goes. And I had the measurement for the uh, diameter. I was able to tell the diameter and then show the silhouette for her and she had to imagine in her mind how it looked like because uh, we didn't get the samples uh -huh. early enough from the factory so I used to work with uh, when I was still studying I did all my prototypes myself to get the idea really clear but nowadays I feel that uh, I can still remember those moments and uh, uh, I can read only pictures so uh, I don't need those 3D models anymore. I'm sometimes using only paper to get the measurements or to make little samples, but I'm not making my own prototypes anymore. The company is doing, and it's, it's doing a that. collaboration with them. I'm giving them ideas, sometimes really rough sketch, mm -hmm. and then they can uh, do their own part. I mean, and speaking of the company, this company has been around 60 years, which is a long time. and and really sort of very strong. I mean, there have been very few moments where it's really kind of ebbed. I mean, it's, <coughs> it's really, it's been a strong presence. And um, as young designers, how, how has that been, kind of working with a company with such a strong legacy? And with, you know, you as wanting to kind of have this, you know, your own individual expression, how does that mesh um, together? Has it been difficult? Have you struggled? Or have you feel that you're very simpatico with, um, well, you obviously are. They wouldn't have hired you, but with <laughs> Martin Becco. But, um, but still, you must have your own individual urges. So how does that, how do you, how do you make that work? How do you not compromise yourself, I guess? 
Well, um, yeah, people ask that quite often, and I, I think I don't think about it so much. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm, I'm just doing my own work, and of course, it's really interesting to have this really long history, and I really appreciate it. But, but I think it's maybe too confusing if you start thinking right. about it mm -hmm. too much. And uh, I think Marimekko chooses designers whose style and like his personal original uh, way of um, making making things they like, so 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 they they don't like to like put them into this box and try to make them look like Marimekko. They choose designers who they think look like Marimekko. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. Mm. And it's of course it's like a roller coaster sometimes, mm. and yeah. it's like a sea. I always say like it's sometimes wavy and stormy, and sometimes it's very calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's very timeless. Well, I have, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna open up to the audience in one minute. I have one other question because um, mm -hmm. it's 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 very much on my mind um, in terms of the whole idea of digital technology, and do you think that has changed in terms of how you how you work with your hands or your own sort of creative process at Marimekko or um, you know how does is it is it still balanced do you think or do you think it's it should be more hand more digital um, I think I'm Mr. Old School. I'll, I think everything should be Second done by hand, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, that's that's the the part of the Marimekko, the history and the mm -hmm. whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I think we all of us we are like we're doing lots of with the hand. Yeah. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. of course, there's yes. this role with the yeah. in, in the di digital technology. So uh, when the files are produced for the print the printing uh, machines, and there's a lot of these things that you um, like the professionals at the artwork studio do mm. in di digital tec yeah. technology yeah, and, and, and screen printing and everything yeah. it's digitalized yeah. but it's nowadays it's really good and uh, the results are good and the quality is like right. yeah. stays in a certain level yeah we have done some few things with digital it digital digitally printed yes. yeah. it's uh, fabrics, but yeah. it's not so it's common. It's like what they use. Yeah, right. yeah like it's only digital, a couple yes. of times. But, yes. but screen really printing is anyway it's the main thing for us. So Yeah, but we like to try different yeah. things also mm. because so it's know. interesting to see. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think of you know how large these designs are and with, with digital technology you can make mm. no repeat so yes. I mean mm. exactly. but maybe that's not good for Mary Mako because <laughs> you, you have repeats all the time but mm. anyway okay I'm going to throw it open to um, the audience and if you please could come up to the microphone so it can get caught on um, we're live streaming this um, so if you have any questions if not I have lots more I can ask um, yes if you could speak into the microphone <coughs> Thank you very much for this incredible presentation. You spoke about inspiration from nature, and I can't think of any greater inspiration. Um, but you also talked about the origins of Mary Mecco, that it started at a time of difficulty in the world and introduced color. I was just wondering how world events come into, do world events come into play in, in design now, how you relate, or do you relate to what's happening in the world, or do you, uh, are there trends that affect your choices, or um, are you able? Are you mainly your individual contribution? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we, the artists, we are very sensitive. We could like have the intuition what's happening in the world and I think we use that a lot and the nature mm -hmm. of course is that for me it's the main thing and the mm -hmm. trends I think we try to avoid the trends if they say this is the color of the they say that brown is the new black <laughs> then we we try to avoid <laughs> that for that season so it's funny the trend if you see this uh, trend offices that comes and they try to offer like, why don't you buy us our trend books? And then you go through them. And there's so many photos of Marimekko. 
I like, <laughs> yeah. why the hell are we buying this? <laughs> <laughs> we, it's us what we're buying in there. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So this is, yeah, I don't know if, mm. if this was the right answer for this. But yeah. yeah, it was perfect answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's just much more sustainable to make uh, things that are timeless. So that's what yeah. we are try mostly trying to do. It's very difficult to date your designs. I mean, I, you know, flipping through, mm. I mean, there was the Bard Graduate Center um, exhibition on mm -hmm. Mari Mecco, and then this recent patterns book that I saw. And it's when you flip through, you cannot tell which was done in the 60s, which was done in the 90s. I mean, there is a timelessness, which I know is seems trite, but there truly is. Um, any other questions from the audience? Um, I can't reach the mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just curious about the relationship between Mari Mecco and the designers. My impression is that they give you a lot of freedom. I don't know how accurate that is, but it seems like at least you're able to work a lot in your home studios. And then the other thing I found interesting was one person mentioned that a designer owned a copyright. And so I was wondering, does the company own any copyrights or do the individual designers actually own the copyrights? Hmm. Yes, we, we share it with, with the company. Mm. So it's both yeah. designer has it and Marie Mikko has it, mm. yeah, like somehow, yeah. yeah. But then also when I use like the old prints from the archives and uh, maybe the, the artist itself is dead, so I will call the, the daughters or the sons and I say, if it's all right, I use that one and I kindly ask them to come in the factory to what's, what's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's very emotional. These people get very emotional and they usually they are very happy with the, mm -hmm. what we're doing. I have to have a single thing like they say, like, you, no, you can't use this. Or mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of they bring alive back this person they come in. Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm these sure. sort of things, we are very strict. Like we don't use anything, this kind of copyrights we are. Especially me, I'm, I'm, I'm always taking care of that. It, can you pass the microphone to... Okay, great. I was just wondering about the materials that you use, and I think originally it was cotton and linen, and now in the modern worlds we have blends, and it's kind of important to have stretchy things in the world. Uh, how do you feel about going this way, which would add uh, a different dimension? Uh, we've been doing uh, like a jersey with the stretch quite a long time and um, of course we are not printing all the prints in, uh, in Marimekko factory. We are doing a lot of in Italy. There's a company called Montero and they have specialized with the very good uh, modern fabrics and mm. wool, wool jersey. It's mm. uh, if you look like the Einomai stress as well, it's with the nice crepe. Uh, stretch fabric. Yeah, those are materials for clothing, but in yes. interior fabrics we use mostly cotton and mm. sometimes linen and even velvet so sometimes. Yeah, but velvet it's and then uh, some depending lighter about the cottons also sometimes. Yeah. And then depending about the product, there's wool and uh, what else? We are trying anyway. Uh, in this world now, since we know all how the the envir environmental things are issue, and uh, we never know what happens to the cotton later. So of course we think a lot about the different materials that we could maybe use in the future, and we are trying. And but nowadays it's mostly cotton is anyway the soul somehow of the company. Okay. Any any other mm -hmm. questions? Hi, um, I've always I've always thought of Marimekko for the prints and the fashion. I didn't realize how much of the product design was actually done in house, um, such as the ceramics um, and the tableware. Is all of the products that you see Marimekko all done in house, or are the prints ever licensed out to other kinds of product companies? Uh, nowadays, uh, almost there might be some like uh, some really iconic, simple things like. Uh, wooden trays or something uh, where we use these old uh, uh, 
simple designs, but uh, mostly nowadays we are going towards the way that we have our own designs and uh, that's why I'm also working there. And it's really nice that to think all the time since we have had uh, prints and parents always that how what kind of shape Marimekko is and that's the way how we want to do it nowadays. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> um, I actually don't have a question, but I do want to tell you that ever since I discovered Mary Mako in the 70s, I have had duvets in the prints of Mary Mako and sheets in Mary Mako, and I always go to bed happy. <laughs> 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 So another question? Okay. I have a bummer question. <laughs> so I, I also love uh, Marimekko, but I was wondering how you feel about like IKEA making cheaper versions of basically your designs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next <Okay>. question. <laughs> I think that's said it all. <laughs> But it's, of course, it's, it's also a compliment, but, but yeah, it's not nice, but, but mm. it, there's something interesting. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. You, you all had some beautiful photography and illustration reference images. Do any of you maintain blogs or anything like that, tumblers of that type of stuff, anywhere where we can look? <laughs> Oh Instagram, yeah. yeah, Instagram I love, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Only Instagram? Facebook, yeah. yeah I okay. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yo, I don't have any. any <laughs> 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 yeah, I have my po portfolio, but there's a few pictures, Facebook? nothing like Are that. Are you on Facebook? No. No? Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm on Instagram, it's more about the visuals. And right. The, yeah. It's like you don't have to buy magazines anymore because if you have following many people, interesting people, you see every day, right. and it's just uh, it's very uh, wide opening, eye opening, like what's going on. Yeah. I think the magazines are so <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. We should okay. stop with the magazines. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need them anymore. Don't tell the public. No, no. Or even I'm an old school, but yeah, that's. that's I how like it is reading nowadays. them on the subway. You yes. don't. I mean, it's. Mm. You probably drive or take the ferry, but <laughs> yeah. I take the subway. One last question. Yep. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for the great presentation. Um, and also because, uh, my question was, because the fashion industry has become such a large part of the global market, it's unusual that a company is so small and, or, or contained, I should say, and not um, subject to outside kind of owners or other market forces. Does that change or how does that change the way you guys design, um, being that you're not owned by another larger holding company? Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, it probably depends on, I mean, yeah. each, you know, director or CEO of the company, have they mm. given you kind of creative freedom to do what mm. you want? Do you have yeah. you ever felt, I know you you haven't, some of you haven't been there that long, but have you ever felt constrained by, you know, freedom of expression there in terms of your work? Mm. Well, of course there are yes. better days and worse days, but uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but mostly we have a lot of freedom there also. Yeah, mostly we have a mo also yeah. freedom, yeah. 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 But of course there are days you feel like, oh, I have to do the compromise, yeah. but that's the right. that's the design world. Yeah, you have to do a compromise. Have to you can't, if yeah. you are like so full on, you, then you're artist, then you just uh, work mm. as an artist after. Mm. Mm. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You don't work for yeah, a company. It's, we are, yeah. after all, we are like industrial designers. Like. Yeah, we are designers, not artists. Yes, right. yeah. And it's somehow something that we have learned to do also, think yeah. about certain things mm -hmm. and, uh, no, so do you compromise. Yeah. I think that's why the Marimekkus choose us. It's in our blood, this mm -hmm. sort of, uh, yeah, we, we make happy compromises. Yeah. <laughs> 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 As happy the Mr. Swiss says. <laughs> <laughs> way of saying it. 
Well, I know we could talk on and on, but thank you very, very much, Mika and Sami and Anomaya, for your great presentations and Jeremiah for yours. Um, and we hope you come back soon and look forward to the next decade, two decades <laughs> of Mari yes. Mecco. I can't wait to see what you're going to come up with then. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.